All right. Welcome to Sudbury News Talk on the morning shift. I'm AJ Walsh. Great to be with you today. Thanks for being with us on uh, YouTube, Facebook, CKLU, on the radio. We're everywhere, uh, online and on the radio. You know, it's it's just a great labor of love doing this show and we've been doing it now since March and uh, we're really excited because we're growing our little community and we're uh, we're basically creating a community conversation which uh, I think is very necessary these days and so yeah so welcome aboard thanks for being with us and uh, make sure to like and share and subscribe if you're on YouTube we noticed we got a few more subscribers the other day and I noticed that the trend nowadays is to not really subscribe just to watch your videos and whatever, but subscribing, uh, allows us to, to basically get the word out there a little bit more, the more, uh, members or subscribers that we do have, the more that YouTube's algorithms will basically put our videos out in front when someone searches Sudbury news, that's the name of our you know, what we're doing here, Sudbury News, but it's a kind of a generic name. So we need subscribers in order to, if someone searches Sudbury News, it just doesn't have all of the other things coming up from 15 years ago, from news that has been, you know, put forward formally, you know, from Sudbury, other outlets, you know, journalistic outlets. And uh, anyways, so yeah, so if you could subscribe, like and share this video on Facebook and uh, with all your friends. We noticed that a, a lot of you have been doing that. We really appreciate that. And if you notice that uh, you're not officially following or when you look at the page, it doesn't say that you like it, make sure to like and follow the, uh, the page as well. That way we can uh, get the word out again more. And uh, Facebook really kind of rewards you for getting more followers and more likes. So thanks for being with us. Uh, as usual, make sure to like, follow, subscribe, as I've said three times in a row now. But uh, all that to say, make sure to comment as well, like Lise. And yes, happy Friday, Lise. Glad that you're with us. I do see you pretty much every day. So yeah, I, I appreciate all of those that are, are joining us on a regular basis. Uh, and speaking of that, uh, Billy, who joins us on a regular basis uh, and has been an integral part of the starting up of the show and the continuation of the show. Good morning, Billy. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm good. I feel the uh, I feel the Friday seeping in. The Friday, kind of a long it's a long yeah, week. Yeah, I can kind of taste the weekend, you know, but you still got that kind of like a little bit of a heavy feeling from a long week kind of thing. Yeah. But we did I have a long, a long, in the, uh, you know, we first did. week. Uh, oh, I see the first week back to school. Well, I think everybody, yeah, that's kind of like a September thing too. You know, it's just a little bit of a, a little bit of that in the air. I don't know. Even though it was a short well, week, a little bit melancholy in September, you know, the, the longing for the summer passed. So, yeah. Yeah. Cause I guess, just because we had a long weekend and it's been a short week per se, like four days of a work week for a lot of us. Um, it's still, like you said, feels like a long week. And, I didn't uh, it was a short week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Labor day weekend last weekend. And, uh, but you're right. It, there's change in the air. Uh, a lot of it. And with yesterday's news that we'll be talking a little bit about today and everybody's talking about, and you can't avoid it. The fact that the the queen, the longest reigning monarch, uh, passed away yesterday. Was it ninety six? She was. That's right. 
that's what I saw. So that's that's uh, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. She made it to uh, a, a very very old age, and uh, she she was the longest reigning pretty monarch. We saw her on the news like not even a year ago, and she was she was pretty. Uh, she looked pretty fit and. Yeah, she did for her age. And uh, but but yeah, so that there's a lot of change I think coming, and and I don't think people really realize how much of a change is going to take place, not only due to that, but just due to other factors as well. I think this September will be a pivotal uh, time of change, uh, in my point of view, as I kind of keep my finger on the pulse of uh, not only local news, but, you know, world news as well and events. Good morning, Julia. Thanks for being with us this morning. The uh, There's a lot of change going to be happening. Uh, similar to, do you remember September 11th, 2001 at all, Billy? <laughs> yeah, I do remember that day, surprisingly so, enough. So I've been saying to a lot of my friends and yourself and others that, this month will be similar uh, to mm, to that in bold terms of prediction. it's bold prediction for sure yeah and whether or not it's known but the the events happening this month will basically be pivotal to our future just like nine eleven was back in two thousand and one there is a lot of chatter about that yeah seems to be September is the month of change. Uh, like you said, something's in the air. It's all, you know, going back to school. Uh, you know, fall is coming. Summer's over. It's a new kind of something new in the air. But there's always something also ominous about, I don't know about you, but my first day of school was always kind of like a very stressful change of time kind of thing. It is, but... Uh don't you feel like at the end of September you've, you know, and using that as kind of like a milestone, you've sort of like overcome a new, you know, uh, a new level kind of thing. And now you're sort of, you know, you're feeling a little bit better at the end of September, walking taller, kind of like, ah, I, I did something that was like daunting and challenging. And now I've, now I'm, you know, now I'm dealing with it. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Anything that's new and challenging when you rise to the occasion and you, you do it, there is that feeling of, okay, I got this. I can do it. Yeah. I, I hear you on that. And, uh, so we'll talk more about that and the queen and now our new King that we have and, uh, and what that could mean to us along with a lot of the, uh, the things that are going on because news continues to happen locally and we're going to get to all that. There's some really cool headlines and a lot to unpack here today. So we'll get right down to things. We'll start with a little bit of weather and uh, we'll get right into the headlines and right into some more talk about what that change and what's bringing about a lot of that change right after this. And yes, so uh, weather continues to happen no matter no matter what. We, we can't avoid it. <laughs> so... And, and luckily, it's pretty nice these last couple of days, for sure. 15 degrees currently. There's a mist out there. Really interesting mist on the drive to work today. Just kind of like, you know, one of those beautiful where you're looking across, you know, green pastures and there's like a layer of, of fog over it. And it's just very picturesque anyway. So beautiful if you have a chance to, to, to get out and to see it. I would encourage you to do that. Just a beautiful, beautiful morning. So sunny today, fog patches will be dissipating this morning. The wind will be coming southwest 30 kilometers and gusting to 50. So we'll have a little bit of a wind. And then the high of 27 today with a humidex reaching 30. So it'll feel like 30, even though it's only 27. Uh, UV index will be 7 or high. Uh, tonight, clear. Wind southwest 30 kilometers, gusting to 50 still. And then becoming light this evening, the low will be 14, very similar to last night. Saturday, sunny, luckily, and the wind will be 20 kilometers from the south again. 
that's what's keeping our temperatures rather no, uh, warm. And the high will be 28, but it'll feel like 33, so it'll feel even hotter uh, than today. So a nice couple days in the forecast here, today and tomorrow. Uh, and then Sunday, uh, 60% chance of showers, high of 21. Monday, 40% chance of showers, same thing, high of 21. And it looks like forecast for showers for the next couple of days after that before we get a little break. But that, again, when you're forecasting that late into the future, you just never know what you're going to get. But anyways, it's going to be nice for the next couple of days. Get out and enjoy it. And uh, yeah, so we'll be back with headlines and some uh, talk of uh, the change that's in the air right after this. So yeah, so what did you think about uh, yesterday when you heard the news that the Queen had passed away? Because it's one of those moments, whether you follow the royal family or not you know there's some people that are really obsessed with the royal family you see them a lot and then there's people who are like meh but i think regardless it's one of those things where you remember where you were kind of like when princess diana was killed or 9 11 or one of those things so what were some of your thoughts yesterday when you first heard the news and good morning nancy by the way yeah you know what uh kind of struck me was uh a lot of these big events, it feels like there's a, a uniformity to the media. The, when, it, when it comes out, it's almost like very uh, precisely, I uh, can't think of the word, but, uh, you know, it's like you open up your phone and they all have like the most, you know, like this complete story, like graphics. This one just seemed a little disjointed. Like there was like rumblings of it and... You know, kind of, kind of staggered. Uh, I could be just, could be just imagining it, but that was, that was kind of my feeling. Was, uh, hmm, either this was really kind of off guard, or, uh, but the first thing I noticed was just the way it kind of rolled out. Didn't, didn't, didn't feel like a lot of times those other big events where there's a almost hypnotic uniformity to it. Well, I think maybe because of the way it played out, she was sick at first and that was the news headlines and you had all the world leaders wishing her the best and stuff. So that was like a huge headline. Oh, the queen is not doing too well. She's in hospital. Mm -hmm. And then literally two hours later, it's like they announced that she had died. So I think that might have contributed to that kind of discombobulation of the, the impact mm -hmm. of the story. Totally, yeah. And, uh, but yeah, so I'll always remember, you know, September the 8th, 2022. And interesting, uh, talking about change, Julia says that uh, today, if you're into astrology, that Mercury is in retrograde and that starts today. Oh, so, Which so I, I, I did not know that, but I just felt it. You know, you can just feel there's something, there's change Change is going to come our way. <laughs> the good, the bad, the well, ugly. That's, uh, yeah, everything's always changing. So that's a very safe prediction. Yeah. Uh, always well, is change. Is that, the the only, is that the only thing that remains constant? Oh, there, that's right. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. So interesting stuff. Anyways, uh, th there are some stories on that in, uh, in the headlines. So we'll just get right into the headlines. We'll work our way through them. We share them on our Facebook page. Also, if you want to check out Sudbury.news, we have that website pretty much up and running the way that it should. Sudbury.news is our website. Have a look. And if you have any comments or any kind of ideas for it, something that you'd like to see on it or like, like it to work like or whatever, any kind of suggestions, you just let us know. Um, and, and Lee says, life is about changes, which is exactly true. Speaking of that, let's just change into our headlines. Uh, C. Okay, so here we go. Sudbury, uh, we'll get off of this. And Sudbury News' Facebook page. 
First one, if you want to start off there, Billy, if you got it. I'm here at the uh, just the very top of the list. And <laughs> is over budget housing complex being retendered as modular build? Yep. Mm, so that's probably pretty self explanatory. Well, remember we talked about there's the housing crisis. Yeah. And uh, Doug Ford uh, proposed that, well, in Toronto and Ottawa, they've already given more powers to the mayors of those cities and wants to, to well, yeah, that, that was their main reason. But they also said, and other things that are important to the province, and that was very ambiguous. But they said mainly because we have a housing issue that they want the municipalities basically to have the power to to get things done quickly and not be caught up in red tape, which I am a fan of. I am not a fan of red tape. I'm a fan of getting things done very quick, but I'm also not a fan of uh, when people have agendas and they're not transparent with them. So you don't say, hey, you want this thing done quick? Well, if you do this, your thing will be done quick, but then in the back of their minds, they're thinking, oh, we also have these other things other reasons why we want to do that, not just to get things done quicker, which I'm very skeptical about. Anyways, so this is one of these examples where we had approved uh, some some housing because we are facing a housing crisis here, not only in Sudbury, but pretty much everywhere in Canada. So it says with the lowest bid coming in at approximately $2.4 billion over budget, million, sorry, did I say billion? 2.4 million over budget. The city is retendering a 14 unit affordable housing complex at 1310 Spark Street, which is now expected to open by the end of the year 2023. So yeah, they're retendering it. So that means the current person or current company that was getting the contract is not going to get it and they're going to redo the process. Yeah, I guess um, I guess you could make the argument that that was kind of responsible in the sense that they had a budget for it and they didn't get uh, you know close enough to that budget to uh, to green light it. So Again, we'll see that. But isn't that the question Are you like have an echo with that end or is that just me? Just when we talk at the same time. Or are you hearing an echo? I get a little bit of one. Oh, okay. I don't hear an echo. If anyone else uh, who's watching uh, is getting an echo, just let us know in the comments. We'd really appreciate that because it helps us to know uh, if we need to deal with a technical issue or, or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah, I just talk a little more like Christopher Walken when I hear it. It's like, stop. <laughs> <laughs> so do you hear me as an echo too or just yourself? No, just myself. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's probably something on your end then. Um, so this is a, a budget that has gone over, but you remember all the budgets have gone over too? Like they even said the $100 million library, it's going to cost more by the time it's built. Like we know that, but they're not, they're not stopping that project because of it. They did stop the KED because of the budget reason, because we do know that since the pandemic, all these are pre-pandemic pretty much, or this might have been during, but we know that materials have gone up incredibly high and inflation, we're going into hyperinflation. So I don't know why the city is now re-going back to this. Like the next person who's going to be budgeting is going to have to use the current prices and I can't see it coming in much lower or at least in theory anyways, you know, because everything's gone up. So now it's just, it's just now more bureaucracy and more red tape. It's now going to take longer to have our housing be built. Now, does that have anything to do with the mayor having any more powers or not? I don't think so. Like the mayor, if he had more power, he could say the same thing. He'd say, oh, this came in over budget. We need to retender it. Like how is that going to get housing built any faster when the mentality is the thing that's holding these things back, I think, more than giving mayors more power or, you know, the fact that it came in over budget to me is a, a no brainer because yeah. cost, costs have gone up. 
You're, what do you think the uh, the remedy to the situation is? <laughs> um, so, so again, I'm not the one who's elected to make these decisions. <laughs> I'm just here to criticize them. Uh, I know but there's, there's there's criticisms, whatever road you take. So yeah. I guess, yeah, uh, and I hear what you're saying. Like there definitely could be, uh, you know, uh, other reasons behind their change of, you know, change yeah. of course on this or retendering it. But yeah, I think in the end, uh, yeah, there's going to be a serious demand for more housing, um, mm -hmm. and I think temperature is going to rise on that. And I think there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, you know, political motivation to get something done quick. So uh, there's going to be probably imperfect uh, situations, uh, you know, and things to be criticized. And some certainly will be warranted, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, there's always going to be criticism. There's no doubt about to, it. Yeah, I think if, you know, if the situation were different and they weren't. Uh, there wasn't really a demand for housing. You know, they were kind of like somehow doing things that were contributing to less housing. That would that would be kind of more uh, alarming. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, again, but not building it is in. Yeah, I guess they were if they were tearing down existing buildings that you know are housing people currently. That would be even even more uh, worrisome. But at the same time. The, the, this 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 could have been built quicker. We know that, and I don't think it has to do with anything giving the mayor more more power, though. I really don't see that helping anything. It could hinder anything. It could hinder things too. If the mayor thought, you know, his best friend should get it, then his best friend's going to get it because he's got more power, and people can't say, "Wait a minute, that's your best friend." Yeah, but remember, I got more power from the premier. Oh yeah, I don't know. So I, I can I give it to my best friend now. Yeah, I think you can make arguments on both sides of that where you could argue that's the cause of the stagnation where there's, you know, people, you know, maybe there's a system that's in place where these people are used to getting it and uh, they, you know, they're like kiboshing something that's going to, uh, you know, shake that up and get things moving where, yeah. you know, and I think the point was made too where, you know, we sort of, have we lost a little bit of democracy in that we sort of, you know, we, we vote for a mayor who's got these, uh, basically lays out their agenda to the people saying, this is what I'm going to do. And then, you know, typically at the end of their term, historically, there's been the sentiment that, well, you know, I, I tried, but I'm just one person and, you know, I got to, my hands were tied. Whereas now they can, they can sort of be judged if they have a little more power. It's like, well, you had the power to do it. Uh, you know, if they deliver, we'll give you another, uh, you know, another round. But so. well, I guess, yeah, I guess we'll look at a general of an army. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, they uh, they're the one who take the fall, right? But uh, they're not the ones in the trenches doing the work per se. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, but yeah, I guess, yeah, it's leadership to me. And it's, can you mobilize people? Can you, you know, I guess having power or not having power, having influence is is a key thing, uh, regardless of whether you're like, it's my way or the highway to get things done. But your influence and leadership, I guess, it's just going to be a, a different, a change in the whole, you know, flavor of the way things are done if you can a governance a difference in the way things are governed which is the way canada is going it's going to a more totalitarian uh philosophy or, or way to to govern and i guess they want the cities to be in line so they got to give the mayors more more power so when the the leader above them says i need you to do this then they can just do that and there's less people in the chain things get done quicker from the top. So like you said, there are yeah. good things. Like there are good things about China when they can build a hospital in seven days. That is an incredibly good thing. 
if you unpack that, however, and I think we're on the opposite end of that spectrum. Like when we go to patch up a, a section of the road, it takes like 12 weeks to patch a little section of a road. And I don't understand that. Like that's, to me, it, the pendulum has swung the total other way. Well, China is one way and we're the opposite. And I think the middle is the sweet spot where you have people that are, let's say, in a union who have rights and stuff, but they don't use that to to thwart progress and to, to not build things and not get things done, which I do think happens quite a bit. Yeah, no, I, and I agree. It is the... Uh it's kind of finding out where where you are between those two, or where the reality is, I guess, uh, on the ground here between those two extremes. Um, you know, with the yeah, you know, authori- authoritarianism, authoritarianism, yeah, authoritarianism, side, which is, uh, you know, I think the uh, a very valid concern these days because there's definitely things moving in that direction. They're a little unnerving. Um, but yeah, I just uh, just wonder if the, the complexity of the situation where, you know, sometimes sometimes you can use the other side in uh, um, I'm going to have to forego that. Though. <laughs> well, that's good because I wanted to share a comment that kind of goes a little bit what we're talking about here. It's from Matt. And he says, even the city can't afford to build anything, yet it's the city that enforces most of the very things that make it so expensive to build with development fees on top of it all. So he's saying, yeah, there's... Uh, City doesn't make it very easy to build things because of the costs. Red tape. Uh, Craig says maybe if they exclude windows and doors, <laughs> that could save some costs. And Cindy says the the cost now is almost seven hundred a square foot to build, higher than many Toronto projects. Taxpayers should not be asked to build apartments for seven hundred thousand a unit and waive their taxes. Time to cancel the junction and build low-cost housing. And uh, Jesse says, I think to solve the housing crisis, we need cheap, affordable homes. And to build that cannot be brought, cannot be bought by landlords or corp- corporations, only individuals and families for the purpose of living in. So yeah. So really good comments. Keep your comments coming on the uh, Facebook page and on the live stream. Really appreciate your comments. Speaking of comments and throwing your hat in the ring and your opinion, Northern Ontario is about to get less representation uh, soon. And it's... it's um, I just saw Julia come on with a comment, but her comment is not coming in on the on the feed for some reason. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Hopefully we can uh, find out the situation. Hey guys, not related to the news. Okay, maybe it's just a a, a private message. So, anyways, yeah. So we're about to get less representation. Proposed uh, northern. MPs signed joint letter opposing riding dis- redistribution. Have you heard about this at all, Billy? I haven't. This is interesting. You know how there's there's a lot of uh, the uh, you know how there's a lot of well, you know how we're the the country's divided into sections and MPs represent their areas, right? Mm-hmm. And and it's it's not always based on population because it can't be. And, uh, but now they're trying to take away one of the areas, one of the ridings in Northern Ontario. So we're going to get one less seat of representation in Northern Ontario due to this redistribution of representation. And what's their, uh, across Canada reasoning for that. 
Northern Ontario should not pay the price of having its representation dwindle in order to satisfy the population growth in bigger centres, which which have access to better infrastructure and resources. So they're saying because Southern Ontario is basically growing at a faster pace than Northern Ontario, uh, we need to give them now, we need to rethink this because they have more people and we have to give them more representation. Where the argument is, well, no, just because you have a block and on that block you used to have five people, but now you have 10, like they still... They still have the same things in common. It's not like they need more representation. Their representation would, their needs are the same. They don't need a, an extra voice of to differentiate the other five from the other five because they're on the same block. Whereas in Northern Ontario, you need that representation because you're up in the, way up in the north corner somewhere and your needs are way different. Whether there's one person or a million, the needs are pretty much the same due to geography. So there's this argument going on here now, whether it's representation by population or regional or geography due to needing the representation, you know? Yeah. I think there's a formula that uses both though, right? Because I mean, there is a, having, having a population in a larger, uh, larger population in an area, I think is one of those factors where they do give more more seats to that. Yeah, exactly. I think, I think realistically they have to factor that in. Yeah, Julia had a, a interesting uh, comment about the uh, headphone issue to help with your headphones <laughs> with oh, your right. echo. Yeah. So, but it I, I gone, oh, it's gone. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Well, there you go. I like that. Maybe we have maybe we have the secret service every once in a while listening in or something and it's causing an echo because we've had that echo before. Um so here's uh Claire saying that uh, she feels that we need to wake people up to what governments governments are doing. Not to be afraid, but do your homework. Uh, not saying much that I could see that need to say more about the uh, the World Economic Forum and the Great Reset. Oh, yes, we've talked about that before, and we will continue to talk about that because that's on a larger scale, right? And it does affect our community as well. So I've I've been in the middle of, I've been in the middle I've started reading the book, The Great Reset. I was one of the first to download it when it first came out. And it does talk about the plans that this particular think tank called the World Economic Forum have for our world. And it does have a global governance kind of agenda. But it, it, part of that is it trickles down to eventually municipalities. And they have, they have their uh, young leaders program, which many leaders that are governing our, our our country at the moment, including our prime minister and most of his, what was it, half of his cabinet, Billy, that are part of the World Economic Forum that went through that program? Well, that's what he kind of bragged, Klaus Schwab was. Yeah. There's that clip of him saying that. Yeah, and when you yeah. said bragging, right, he said... He, and yeah, he talks about, again, sort of bringing the queen back around. It's, it's mostly like the Commonwealth countries that they seem to have a, He's, he's most proud of his uh, kind of accomplishments. I think he uses the word infiltration, actually. He did. He said he was really, he just came back from a meeting with Prime Minister Trudeau and his cabinet, and uh, he was happy to announce that most of the cabinet were part of the WEF, and and uh, he's glad to announce that he's infiltrated uh, our government uh, to the point where they can now have their their agenda kind of flow out. So, uh, on top of this young leader program to which Justin Trudeau uh, was a, a member of, along with Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, even Vladimir Putin was a, a member of that as well. Uh, we have local represent representatives, and I forget the name they call them. But anyways, we have people in our community that 
that are part of that organization that are lobbying to have these uh, agendas move forward. And I do believe that the the Premier of Ontario proposing mayors having more uh, authority in their communities it are is a part of that that whole agenda because that will get things moving faster if it comes from the top. Part of someone from, let's say, Klaus Schwab has an idea. He can give that to the Prime Minister of Canada, who can give that to the Premier of Ontario, who could then give that to the mayor of a community. And it's only like a four-person chain rather than all through all of the bureaucracies and, you know, all of the members of parliament or the council members in a community, right? So the more power the leaders get, the less the chain has to be for the message to come from the top. But yeah, no, we talk about that quite often. And this could be part of the changes that we're talking about here in Northern Ontario and getting the less representation instead of uh, continuing with the representation that we do have currently. So Northern Ontario's members of parliament ignored party lines. So meaning they got together, they put aside their bipartisanship and released a joint letter expressing concern over the draft plan to restructure federal riding boundaries across the north. Signatories include Nickel Belt MP Mark Sede and Sudbury MP Viviane Lapointe. Also signing the letter was Kenora MP Eric Melillo, Timmins James Bay MP Charlie Angus, Thunder Bay Rainy River MP Marcus Palowski, and then the list goes on. All the MPs basically from around the north signed this petition. And here's a quote from, uh, can't see who the quote's from at the moment, but as members of parliament representing the federal electoral districts of Northern Ontario, oh, this is part of the letter. We have substantial concerns regarding the proposed boundary changes. Chief among those concerns are the loss of electoral district and electoral district the creation of an electoral of electoral boundaries that will be more challenging to serve and a limited number of consti- of uh, consultations goes on to say we understand that the commission has been seized with a difficult task seized with a difficult task of reviewing and adjusting riding boundaries but northern ontario should not pay the price of having its representation dwindle in order to satisfy the population growth in bigger centers which have access to better infrastructure and resources, which is true. So reducing the number of ridings in Northern Ontario, will, uh, which is sparsely populated, will bring uh, geographically massive, will, while being geographically massive, will only harm Northern residents. So yeah, so you can read this letter, Sudbury.com. The link is on our Facebook page and uh, see what that will do to where we live and the kind of representation that we will have if that goes ahead. It makes me think of, uh, remember like the redistricting um, was a big topic in the States, uh, at least if, well, it's probably every election, but that was one of the... Uh, uh, the reason it is, is you could, you know, I think every so often the whoever's in power can redraw the lines. But what they would be doing is they would they could see all the demographics on the map of like who would be, you know, the uh, Democrats and uh, Republican sort of strongholds. And then they could sort of by drawing the line in a certain way, they could sort of capture the the district to be more okay, this is more likely to vote Republican next time if we draw the lines over here, just stretch us a little bit further this way, get this mm-hmm. way. For sure. So that became a, uh, you know, an, an art and science into itself that's a little bit, you know, that's uh, that's kind of gaming the system a little bit in a, not a totally integral way to do that kind of. So I don't know if that relates to this, but it sounds like it's, Sounds like it's cousins to this idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and some people are saying, you know, well, well, of course these MPs are going to be against it because they're going to lose some of their area and some of their power uh, up here, right? But at the same time, that is true. If it's your job that's on the line, you're going to be against it. But 
for the people of Northern Ontario, we are going to be losing our representation too. We're just going to have one less uh, voice and, and the boundaries are going to be reset. So the boundaries are going to be even larger uh, to represent a more diverse uh, section of people. So they don't get, they don't get the proper representation as things get watered down. Right. So unfortunately, lots of comments coming in. I just want to uh, let everyone know I'm not able to share your comments if it's more than two sentences, just because it just doesn't uh, fit on the screen. So if you're able to put your comments into, I know it's not easy sometimes, but if you're able to get it into like a two sentence, two line kind of format, uh, I'll be able to share it. And uh, yeah, it's just the, the, the technology we're using. It, it only allows for that, unfortunately. That's a great comment, Miles. Yeah. The article says Northern Ontario has already lost two ridings since 1974. Ooh, wow. So we've been losing and, and it would be more losing if it continues to lose another voice. So that would be three if it went ahead since 1974. So, yeah. So this is, uh, you know, I, I really hope, I don't know what we can do other than these current MPs are, you know, putting a letter forward, but us as constituents, us as people that, um, you know, we, we're citizens up here. I wonder if there's something we can do as well to just kind of keep the representation uh, here, whether, whether or not we're kind of apathetic to politics in the first place. I think if you don't have representation, you don't even have a chance to really mm -hmm. do anything. Right. Even if it you could be, we feel like there is very little we could do, we could, you know, write a letter. It seems like there's a, you know, it, it seems like a big gap between sort of like writing a letter and then all of a sudden having a big march in the streets. It feels like there needs to be more. Uh, uh, and I'm sure there is. Uh, I do see people getting involved. I guess that's probably the answer that I'm reluctant to come to myself is that getting involved in things, uh, going to those meetings, uh, raising public awareness. Yeah, for sure. Like we need to get involved. We just do. And, and I think this is a, a way we can, at least we're having a conversation. I think social media is a great tool. And I think if we can utilize that and, and all get on the same page, uh, this is a way to do that is to kind of just um, have your voice heard, see, see the pulse of what people uh, are, are wanting to do, share ideas, uh, mobilize, get involved and make change. Now, one comment that Claire made, uh, said that we need Pierre Polyev. Uh, as prime minister and, and he more than likely will be the new conservative leader announced. I think, I think it's tomorrow. Uh, however, just spoiler alert. And you, you're the one who wanted us to talk more about it is the WEF. He was found to be on the list of the young leaders program as well. And that was uh, through Theo Fleury, former Calgary um, flames hockey player turned kind of activist uh, found that, he was also on the list of the WEF. So uh, no matter what side you're on. Uh, I don't know. They, what do you think? The, how many people do you figure on a ratio wise that go through that program? Because it is one of those sort of collect all. I, you know, everyone goes through that program. Mm, you know, it's, you know, that ends up being one, you know, part of the team kind of thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of skeptical that uh, there is uh, one just kind of, I feel the game is played you know, on that level, there's a little more, uh, uh, you know, infiltration is the new kind of political warfare. So I, I yeah. don't think that everyone goes through is working for them, but uh, it, and it seems like a lot of them, you know, uh, go through and then they're kind of disconnected uh, from there on in, unless they're sleeper agents. Yeah, well, and I, and I know you, yeah, again, you could be double agents and I and I didn't even think of that that idea of, of like of being part of something, but act at the same time, you know, kind of having ulterior motives or whatever, just going in to see, see what's going on. But again, um, I guess if, if we're just unpacking this and talking about it, 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 at least suffice it to say he was on that list, I guess is all we can say. What his motives are, we, we can't say for sure. We just mm -hmm. know that he's on the list, right? That's just a fact. 
but yeah, you're right. We can speculate to it. You know, if he's truly has the, the, you know, the, uh, Canadians, uh, in mind, the better, you know, w- what's better for us in mind mm-hmm. more, more than his own interests. We can only hope of any politician that That's they're right. actually there Back, to serve. We'll, we'll judge, uh, more than his history kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Whether our needs are the first and foremost priority or their own kind of thing. Uh, here's a, just a kind of a funny story. I don't know if it's funny, but it's a interesting one. Uh, somebody uh, was uh, speeding at the roundabout and it led to them being charged for impaired driving. I think it was at the, uh, the Boreal one. At least they have a picture of that one there, but isn't it kind of hard to speed around one of those things? Ah, uh, let's see. Speed limit is 70 kilometers an hour. Well, he's doing 109. Holy cow. On a roundabout. He was um, exiting the roundabout at 109. So I guess, I don't know if was he going around in circles or did he just kind of go through and, uh, yeah, it's true. It's just a bit of a curve. If, yeah, if yeah. you're just kind of going straight, you're just kind of doing a little S or whatever. Like a little whiplash, but. Yeah, I <laughs> think that's still pretty fast to go on a roundabout. And I guess if you're under the influence, uh, that's that's impairing your ability to, you know, make decisions. And uh, yeah. I'd have caught him by surprise. I think so. Yeah, I wouldn't be speeding a 109 on a roundabout if you've had, you know, too much to drink just in case uh, miles says the speed limit there is 60. So yeah, so that's more than double the speed limit. Um, and in other news, the, uh, indie Sudbury indie cinemas is going to be unveiling, uh, some special programming and new initiatives. Are you familiar with the Sudbury indie cinema? I am. I am actually kind of a fan i regretfully uh haven't gone to uh see the things that i plan to see which is pretty true for most outside entertainment these days yeah i think the pandemic yeah, had a lot of stuff that's Hi, uh I'm Beth Merritt oh. at Sudbury Indy Cinema. And- <laughs> there it oh is. she has she has a little message there why don't we just play that yeah. then well play if it, it wasn't if it wasn't for you doing that, I wouldn't even have thought of doing this. So, hey, okay, we're going to hear from I'm Beth Mares at her. Sudbury Indie Cinema. And in the month of September, we have a lot of special events coming up. A lot of sick stuff. So, sick is Sudbury Indie Preacher Convention. And that's going to be happening September uh, 16th to 17th. Um, it is a fantasy, um, horror, sci-fi convention. First time ever happening here. We're very excited about that. We're also going to be hosting Valerie Bahajiar and the Northern Ontario premiere of her latest film, Carmen, that's happening on Wednesday, September 21st, and followed on Friday, September 23rd, with the first improv show that Sudbury has seen since the pandemic. This is being run by Odd Hawks, and it will be happening again uh, on Friday at 8 p.m. at the cinema. Um, The next day, Saturday, September 24th, we're running Stuff. Stuff is Sudbury's latest film festival. The anacronym stands for, Stuff stands for, Sudbury's Tiny Underground Film Festival. And this has a focus on experimental, artist-driven, no-budget, low-budget films. A lot of short films. We're bringing the best in Canadian experimental, the best in local, um, no-budget, low-budget, local shorts. Um, We have three features, and we're also, with the underground theme, running a film on mining. Souterrain. It won the best French language film at Cinefest in 2021, and we're delighted to bring it back with the assistance of USW 2020. Um, At the end of the month, on September 30th, we will be uh, commemorating um, the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation with two free screenings of uh, Decolonial Relations. Um, the 3 p.m. screening will have Anishinaabe um, subtitles and the 6.30 public screening will have French and English subtitles. Both will be followed by a panel uh, of filmmakers and other doc subjects. We're really, really excited about our September schedule. And in addition, 
we're going to be running a special so that you can get passes to sick and stuff and uh, the Carmen premiere um, and um, as well as the comedy festival and three other top art house films that we are playing this month all for $99 so visit our website um, and we'll be delighted to um, to host you here this month thank you so much Sudbury isn't that cool I really like the fact that she did like like a video you know like a like mm-hmm. a video um, instead of just sending out a press release or something like that I just yeah. thought that was kind of neat Although it, it would have been nice, like I was kind of uh, clicking when I did click on it to, to grab a couple things where I wouldn't have to like kind of watch the video. So it'd be nice to have like a little bit of uh, some of the bullet points on there. So so I, it was good that she did the video, but also, but I guess it's, uh, I, you know, I, I guess I, I guess I've read love handle. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess uh, today. Yeah, because your uh, your laptop is directly plugged in to to what we're doing too, which which is kind of neat now because it gives us the opportunity. Oh, okay. If you if you had something you wanted to play or whatever, all right, I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, we could do that as well. Probably just all the audio. If we could figure out the video like we did before, it would be cool too. So, anyways, yeah, if she if they had some kind of text or something uh, that went out with that, so that way people can share that. But the video, I think, is really cool. Gives you a sense. But I, I got the sense too that. The Sudbury indie, indie, thin, indie cinemas, indie cinemas sounded a bit like they have a bit, a bit of a political angle too. Did you get that same sense too? Well, I think the uh, yeah, I mean that a lot of the like documentary documentaries that they run. Um, she did run for NDP, I believe, at one point, so that might. You know, if sometimes the uh, extensions of your projects are uh, extensions of yourself, then mm-hmm. that would, uh, you could see some of that in there. Yeah, 100%. Much like uh, probably what this show is to us. Yeah, I guess. I, I, I myself would like to be, you know, bipartisan, but if you, if you kind of smell a little bit of a spin one way or the other, I really would just like to not be partisan, even though, like you mentioned before, you kind of can't help but be like, if you, if you have principles and fundamentals that you believe in, it's it's kind of hard job in this world is to sort of present your case for it. I guess your point of view. Exactly. And I, and I really do like, I like a level playing field. I always did. And to hear everybody's point of view, but anyways, I just noticed that there's a bit of a political, uh, angle there with the, uh, the selection of different documentaries and things, but, but they also need a place to, to be too. Right. And where else would they be shown in Sudbury? So this, this gives an outlet for, for like uh, indie documentary yeah, it's, it's filmmakers. You yeah. Know, where it's like, uh, you know, things flock together in communities and that's, uh, it's kind of nice to have uh, lots of different healthy communities. Now, ending with what we began with, the, the death of uh, the longest reigning monarch in, uh, you know, our history, uh, they came to Sudbury in 1984. I don't know if, you, did you, were you, did you see them when they came here? I think they were here to kind of officially launch Science North. Yeah, I didn't see them. Um, I kind of remember that. I was, you know, not, not hyper aware of it, but uh when I look back at the videos, it's like, oh yeah, I think I remember seeing that on the news. Oh, for sure. And uh, that that wasn't the only visit by the royal family uh, here in Sudbury. I know Charles and Diana came, and mm-hmm. I know they went. Um, Queen was here before that too, I think. Hey, in the uh, was it the fifties? Yeah, I think State Sudbury Range Hotel is uh, legend has it. Yeah, Sudbury's on the map for the royal family for sure. They've they've made several visits uh, here, and uh, there's there's no doubt about it. It's an important city to them. The economy for mining and things like that's very integral to the the world's economy. And uh, I don't know if we realize that in Sudbury as much as uh, as it is. But so Queen Elizabeth II passed away yesterday, September the eighth, and Mercury is in retrograde as Julia was able to 
to uh, remind us. And so uh, if that if that has anything to do with the change that we're feeling, uh, we're definitely feeling some changes coming on, and there will be changes with a new king, no longer a queen, and it will be King Charles the Third will be his official title. And we'll see how quickly the money gets changed. The picture at the Sudbury Arena that we all face during singing O Canada, that'll get changed. All the courts will have a new picture in them so we can bow before the king instead of bow before the queen while entering the chambers of the court. So these are the things that we live with. Long live the king, Jesse says, yes. Uh, My country, tis of thee. I will be able to sing that song. I was taught in college that the queen or the king has really nothing to do with Canada anymore. Uh, and, and I raised my hand and I said, uh, can you just explain me the role of the governor general, please? And they said, oh, moving on, moving on, other things. <laughs> so I don't know why they're teaching that in uh, college, uh, but we were taught that the queen has nothing to do, or the king, but they are our monarch and they are the head of state. For Canada, we still are a commonwealth, even though we have, you know, we have certain liberties from the monarchy. We are still under their rule, and it is true we have a king now. So, thanks. Uh, so, congratulations to King Charles. Condolences to Queen Elizabeth, and uh, we'll be back same time, same place tomorrow. But the great thing is that Earshot Daily will will be on right after this show so again billy i i have to really 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 thank you for being on today you really 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 helped out a lot because i would have been having to do the show solo oh well you know it's always my pleasure so thank you very much and thank you everyone for for commenting sorry if i wasn't able to get to all the comments or whatever but there's a lot of comments in the comment section please see those and if you want to continue the conversation there go ahead feel free or we'll be back same time same place not tomorrow because it's saturday but on one on Monday. So have a great one, everyone. Thanks, Billy. Ciao. This is Sudbury News Talk on the morning shift.